Skyrim has more weapons than Starfield has loading screens, but only a fraction of them are worth your time. Today, we'll rank all the unique weapons in Skyrim to see which ones are overpowered death machines and which are pieces of scrap in disguise. D tier Aegis Bane An iron warhammer that deals 5 points of frost damage to health and stamina. Not the worst enchantment in the world, but it's an iron warhammer for goodness sake. D tier Bolar's Oathblade Acquiring Olar's Oathblade can be tricky, especially if you've already completed Ill Met by Moonlight. However, the effort it takes to acquire this weapon is hardly worth the reward. Its enchantments are okay, dealing stamina damage and inflicting fear, but the problem is that it's on a sword that's not very powerful. D tier Froki's Bow Froki's Bow is an aggressively boring weapon that adds almost nothing to the regular longbow. In fact, it's almost identical to that weapon, except for an added 10 points of stamina damage. Did somebody say snooze fest? D tier Ghost Blade This spectral blade might look cool, but don't let its ethereal glow fool you. While it can deal slightly more damage and ignore armor, the reality is a bit… lackluster. The bonus damage is negligible, and powerful enemies often have little armor anyway. So while this blade may be good at taking down mud crabs, you won't see me using it anytime soon. D tier Headman's Axe Atar's weapon of choice may get points for being the longest reaching weapon in the game, but once the novelty of that is gone, you're left with an unenchanted battle axe that's heavier than your mum. D tier Hoarfrost Hoarfrost is just a slightly better ancient Nord pickaxe. Why you would use this as a weapon is already beyond me, but the fact that you can't disenchant it means this pickaxe should have been left in the mines it was found in. D tier Lunar Weapons the Lunar Weapons might be an upgrade for early players, but that doesn't change the fact that the Silent Moon's enchantment is just plain bad. Burning enemies during the night time might sound cool, but why would use this enchantment instead of fire damage? I don't know. It also doesn't help that the weapon is drained even if it's used in the daytime when the enchantment doesn't work. D tier Nettlebane Nettlebane is a uniquely terrible weapon. While other weapons are upgrades to what they're modeled off, or at least slightly inferior, Nettlebane is much, much worse than the ebony dagger it's based on. It deals less damage, weighs more, and sells at a fraction of the cost. Couple this with the fact that it has no enchantment, and it looks similar to a piece of branch that fell from a tree, and you got yourself one of the worst daggers in the game. D tier Poacher's Axe It's a woodcutter's axe with an extra 3 damage to animals. Yeah, that's going straight to the D tier. Rueful Axe The Rueful Axe has no doubt an incredible design, but everything else about it trumps this one saving grace. It's the only Daedric weapon that doesn't count towards the Oblivion Walker achievement, making it useless for trophy hunters. Worse still, you have to put down a dog to even obtain it. I'm sorry, but choosing this over the Mask of Clavicus Vile was already a hard sell, and now you want me to butcher a canine as well? D tier The Woodsman's Friend Found on the corpse of someone foolish enough to use this piece of garbage, the Woodsman's Friend is identical to the Iron Battle Axe, only with an extra point of damage. However, even an upgrade as minimal as this is undermined by the weapon's swing speed, leading the Woodsman's Friend to deal less damage per second than the standard Iron Battle Axe. Add a copy-paste design and non-existent sale price to the mix, and you got yourself a truly terrible weapon. Best thing you can do now is let this junk rust in the wilderness where you found it. D tier Trollsbane, which also happens to be my Twitter handle, is the name of a unique weapon in Skyrim, and a pretty bad one at that. This warhammer is found on the corpse of its previous owner, Frofnir, a Nord supposedly famous for slaying trolls. Too bad he chose to put his unique enchantment on a steel warhammer of all weapons. Worst of all is that the burning effect only works on trolls. I hate trolls as much as the next guy, but they aren't exactly crawling all over the place. If Frofnir chose to be the bane of Draugr or dragons, then maybe we'd be working with something here. But as it stands, I see no reason to go looking for this weapon. D tier C tier Bloodthorn Ever wanted your weapon to double as a soul gem charger? Then look no further than Bloodthorn. Found in the aptly named Hag's End, this blade drains health from foes, as well as sucking their very soul with each kill. It's perfect for topping your enchanted weapons in the early game, but 
wanes in usefulness as you acquire stronger weapons. Sita Galder weapons Nestled within the depths of Mikrul Galderson's tomb lie two weapons, both boasting decent damage for the low-level characters, but their true value lies within their enchantments. The best thing you can do with either of these weapons is to destroy them and put their health and magicka absorption enchantments into a weapon with some meat on its bones. C tier Glass Bow of the Stag Prince This glass bow has the unique ability to increase your health and stamina for every 20 animals you slay with it. While the idea of an enchantment getting stronger from completing challenges sounds appealing, the reality is that these bonuses become insignificant as your character levels up. C tier Harkon Sword Harkon might be a deadbeat dad, but his weapon choices are on point, as long as you're a vampire, that is. His blade can absorb your enemy's health, stamina, and magicka all at once. Sounds pretty sweet, right? Well, there's a big catch. The enchantment only works if you're a vampire. So, unless you're willing to embrace the eternal thirst, along with the sun allergy and disgusting face that goes with it, then this weapon might not be such a bad choice. But if you're asking me, all that effort isn't worth it for this weapon alone. C tier Notched Pickaxe The Notched Pickaxe isn't going to win you any fights, but its power lies in its ability to increase your smithing by 5 points. Not only can this be helpful for lower level players wanting to craft better gear, but it also means that legendary gear can now be crafted beyond its usual limits. So, while it might not be slaying dragons anytime soon, at least it can help craft the weapons that can. C tier Red Eagle's Bane Once wielded by the legendary Nord hero, Red Eagle, Red Eagle's Bane carries the weight of history. Unfortunately, it also carries the weight of being pretty underwhelming. Its damage is about as impressive as a stealth archer showing off, and its enchantment is more of a polite suggestion than a powerful effect. It's a decent starter weapon, but its glory days are clearly long gone. C tier Steel Battle Axe of Fiery Souls While its enchantment is pretty cool, the weapon itself is not. Like that scene from Black Panther, your best course of action is to destroy the weapon and only keep the valuable part, its enchantment. C tier Stormfang This survivor of a volcanic apocalypse somehow found itself in the hands of a Reaver Lord. While its design is identical to the Steel Greatsword and its stats are mediocre, it packs a decent punch of shock damage. It might be a good choice for low-level barbarians, but for everyone else, it's a C-tier relic of a bygone era. The Pale Blade The quest to acquire the Pale Blade is one of the creepiest in Skyrim. However, the weapon itself is… well, just okay. Its enchantment deals 25 points of frost damage, 50 points of stamina damage, and instills fear to weaker enemies. But its effects become negligible as you progress further in the game. While the quest is worth doing for the story alone, the Pale Blade falls into the seats here for its lackluster performance. Volder's Lucky Dagger Some claim this dagger to be a hidden gem, with its supposedly high chance of critical hits. But before you get your hopes up, there's one crucial detail these people are missing. Critical hits only consider the base damage of a weapon, ignoring enchantments and skills. Since this dagger is basically just an enchanted steel dagger, the benefits of such an enchantment are minimal. That being said, no matter how little the damage from critical hits are, they always stagger enemies, making Volder's Lucky Dagger a decent choice for an offhand weapon. C tier B tier Dawnguard Rune Hammer this Warhammer boasts the most unique enchantments in the game, explosive runes. By simply bashing the ground, you can watch as enemies foolishly run into your magical traps and go flying from 50 points of fire damage. Additionally, it shreds through the undead like hot butter, making it ideal for clearing out hordes of those pesky Draugr. Its lack of level scaling does hold it back from true greatness, but its fun gimmick of an enchantment still gives it a place in the B tier. Dwarven Black Bow of Fate Ever wondered if Dwarven technology comes in black? Well, now you know. This upgraded Dwarven bow has a sleek design and an enchantment that can stagger enemies like there's no tomorrow. But while it may look cool, its damage output is okay at best. D tier Iduj and Okin These two weapons are decent finds for low-level players. Both boast a frost damage enchantment, which can be useful early in your playthrough. However, their base damage and little upgrade potential limit their usefulness later in the game. B tier Ebony Blade The Ebony Blade is a dangerous weapon with a controversial ability. 
it absorbs the soul of slain followers. While the increase in damage this yields is undeniable, the method of acquiring it has led to many people, myself included, ignoring this weapon altogether. I'm sure the less morally obligated among you will find this weapon to be amazing, but for me, it's going in the beta. For Reynolds End Despite the Dark Brotherhood questline being an entire storyline dedicated to assassins, it offers surprisingly few unique weapons. For Reynolds End, a unique bow acquired during Vittoria Vici's assassination is one of the few exceptions. It has decent damage and a slowing enchantment that makes sure nobody can escape your crosshairs. Its effectiveness does wane over time, but it still gets a beta for being a reminder of the dark deeds you committed as a member of the Dark Brotherhood. Mirak Sword With its exceptionally high damage and stunning design, Mirak Sword seems like an excellent choice for those who opt for the sword and board. But considering it's the reward for defeating the final boss, one might expect something a little more powerful. With an enchantment that merely absorbs 15 points of stamina, Mirak's sword doesn't really live up to the hype. While it may not be someone's go-to weapon, its aesthetics make it a worthy prize for collectors nonetheless. Beater Volendrung This Dwemer Warhammer wouldn't be out of place in an HR Giger art book. With its intricately hideous design, it's not just a pretty face either. Volendrung is the second fastest Warhammer in the game, and its stamina draining enchantment can leave enemies begging for a breather. However, even a weapon as well made as Volendrung has limitations. Its effectiveness is lost in the wake of the powerhouses you face in the late game, and the weight of carrying such a heavy weapon is sure to cause problems for the kleptomaniacs among you. Still, it's a B-tier weapon that absolutely deserves a place in your collection. Wuthraz Elder Scrolls lore is rich in two things, intricate characters and endless amounts of racism, and few other races are as passionate about the latter as the Nords. So, it's only natural that Ysgramor himself has a weapon that deals extra damage to elven races in particular. I didn't think someone could be so racist that their weapon would be imbued with their prejudice, but here we are. Despite its comical enchantment, however, Wulthrad is heavy, unupgradable, and ultimately represents the very thing that makes the Stormcloaks so insufferable. B tier. A tier. Blade of Woe. Acquired at the end of the Dark Brotherhood questline, the Blade of Woe has damage on par with that of the Dragonbone Dagger and an enchantment that absorbs 10 points of health. Additionally, an oversight by Bethesda lets you acquire two Blades of Woe by pickpocketing Astrid, doubling its effectiveness. However, the Blade of Woe isn't perfect. Its enchantment is good, but not exceptional, and it has the highest weight and slowest swing speed of all daggers. Despite these limitations, the Blade of Woe is still a scarily effective weapon in the right hands and earns a place in the A tier. Blood Scythe and Soul Render Say what you want about Hackner Deathbrand, but this fearsome pirate had great taste in weapons. While the Blood Scythe and Soul Render are pretty terrible on their own, their power shines through when they're used together. When dual wielded, Blood Scythe absorbs health and has a chance to sunder armor, while Soul Render absorbs magicka and has a chance to dispel armor spells. This makes them ideal for a dual wielding playstyle, with the caveat that they require one another to be useful. Aita Champion's Cudgel Imperial weapons are always a unique find, but the Champion's Cudgel is something else. Acquired after slaying the undead general Falx Carrius, the Champion's Cudgel has a beautiful, Imperial-inspired design and a rare Chaos enchantment that deals fire, frost, and shock damage simultaneously. Its unscaled stats make it a powerful weapon in the early to mid-game, but its inability to be upgraded hinders its long-term viability. This leads to many people destroying this work of art for the sake of harvesting its enchantment. Aetir Chillrend Elder Scrolls veterans will quickly recognize Chillrend, as it was one of the most powerful weapons in Oblivion. Now making a return in Skyrim, Chillrend still packs a mean punch, lots of base and frost damage, and paralyzes enemies for two seconds. However, its effectiveness is tempered by Skyrim's climate. Unlike those from the lush forests of Cyrodiil, Skyrim's creatures have built a tolerance to the land's harsh climate, leading to many enemies having frost resistance, diminishing Chilren's impact. While not quite as impressive as its predecessor, Chilren remains a powerful weapon that can be taken all the way into the end game. A tier. Dawnguard Runax 
A must-have for any undead slayer, the Dawnguard Rune Axe features a unique sun enchantment that deals bonus damage to undead enemies based on how many of them you've slain. Stacking up to a whopping 100 points, pair it with the Dawnbreaker and the undead of Skyrim will wish they stayed 6 feet under. A tier Keening Forged by Kagranak himself and made to pierce the heart of a god, Keening was not only visually stunning, but also boasts a powerful enchantment that siphons health, magic, and stamina. While its effectiveness can be diminished later in the game, its historical significance and visual appeal make it well worth the effort of acquiring. A tier Mace of Molag Bal Molag Bal is perhaps the cruelest and most malevolent of all Daedra, and his mace reflects this nature. The Mace of Molag Bal drains enemy stamina and magicka, hindering their ability to fight back, while also trapping their souls at once they're defeated, a fitting touch for a being obsessed with souls. Players can also reap the benefits of this weapon not scaling to your level, making it one of the best weapons in the early game. As long as you're okay with cooperating with such a vile being, then getting the Mace of Molag Bal is a no-brainer. A tier S tier Oriel's Bow while its base damage may appear underwhelming, Oriel's bow makes up for it with 20 points of sun damage. With this enchantment, Oriel's bow becomes devastating against the undead. Considering Skyrim has enough undead for it to be a zombie apocalypse, Oriel's bow becomes an endgame favorite, earning it a place in the S tier. Bloodskull Blade Besides its magnificent design and high base damage, the Bloodskull Blade unleashes blasts of energy during power attacks, making it the only melee weapon that can shoot projectiles. I mean, how can I not put this in the S tier? Dawnbreaker The Rune Axe's older cousin, Dawnbreaker, has become a staple in many players' arsenals. This beautiful sword has a burning enchantment that's always useful, but its true power lies in its unique ability to trigger fiery explosions when slaying undead. And with Skyrim having a seemingly endless supply of such creatures, Dawnbreaker's effectiveness is written on the wall. S tier Dragonbane Unlike the underwhelming Trollsbane, Dragonbane lives up to its name. Sleek and powerful, this enchanted blade sword has a potent enchantment that deals 40 points of damage against dragons and shocks to all enemies, scaling or otherwise. There's no better weapon for dealing with the dragon crisis, so it rightfully earns a place in the S tier. Merun's Razor Merun's Razor has been revered as the best dagger in Skyrim. Its damage matches the standard Daedric dagger, but its true power lies in its enchantment, offering the chance to instantly kill any enemy. This potent ability, coupled with its respectable damage, makes Merun's Razor the ultimate offhand weapon, no matter where you are in your playthrough. S tier Nightingale Blade with 25 points of health and stamina absorption, and the ability to further tamper its base damage, the Nightingale Blade could be the strongest one-handed weapon in the game. Adding the fact that this enchantment can only be applied on other weapons with max level enchanting, and you have a weapon that cements itself in the S tier. The Longhammer Two-handed weapons often trade slow swings for heavy damage. However, the Longhammer is a unique exception. This Warhammer has a swing speed on par with a one-handed mace. Combined with the smithing enhancements and the Elemental Fury Shout, the Longhammer can achieve one of the highest DPS outputs in the game. Additionally, the staggering effect of two-handed weapons can leave your opponent barely getting a swing at you. This combination of devastating attacks in tandem with strong defensive capabilities earns the Longhammer a well-deserved spot in the S tier. Windshear the Windshear is arguably the most powerful weapon in all of Skyrim, bordering on broken in its capabilities. This is thanks to its two unique effects. Firstly, it has a chance to knock enemies down when you perform a block bash. While this is more humorous than strategically valuable, it can still offer some crowd control when needed. Secondly, and more importantly, Windshear has a 100% chance to stagger any enemy it hits, regardless of their size or strength. All you have to do is keep feeding this thing soul gems and manage your stamina, and you'll turn legendary difficulty into easy mode. S tier. Subscribe to fall damage, you milk drinker.